If you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to the Oshanka Show. Today I would like to cover a topic of racism in Soviet Union. I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, to talk about it because on the surface we had no racism of course in Soviet Union because Soviet government promoted the friendship of all the nations all the peoples in the world in their fight against the global imperialism so we had hundreds thousands of banners and posters and you know, picturing uh, different color faces all united together like you know workers of the world united it doesn't matter if you're yellow or black or white, we're all together in our battle against the world capitalism. Well, the reality was quite different, although, you know, this is a situation when, like, if you don't have black people, you don't really have racism in the country because there's really no one around you to be kind of like your worst uh, characters will show up. I'm trying to think about any example, but you know, if if you, like we didn't have uh, uh, black people in the Soviet Union, so there was no really like a racism situation. It's kind of similar what you can think of. Like, in Soviet Union, I was always proud to announce we have no unemployment, but and that was the reason why, if you don't work, it's illegal not to work. So the government will claim, of course, I have uh, we have zero unemployment because even the ones that don't work, they'll fudge some papers that it looks like they work. Uh, so yeah, we didn't have a racism because we like didn't have a lot of uh, people of different uh, color. But at the same time, we actually had a racism and it was a quite extreme. And I want to mention right away uh, the language situation. So. You probably know that uh, in Spanish, black is negro. And that word kind of went into Russian language. So, uh, official word for the black person was negr. So, you know, you're, if you're a black-skinned person, you are negr. And that was a normal good word. It wasn't derogative. Now, if you call a black person as black, черный или чернокожий, black skin person, then this is a kind of like a racist term almost. So if you want to show disrespect, you'll call him he's black or he's black skin. If you say in a respectful way, you say he's negr, on negr, he's, you know, black person <laughs> in a good way. So even I live in a capital of Ukraine, Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, which is population around 3 million at that time, or maybe two and a half, I barely met any black people in my life. And uh, so that was a, quite a shock for me when I came to the United States in 1995 because I got a job in a camp for inner city kids from Chicago. So that was a 100% black camp, kids, counselors, except the camp director and some staff, everyone else was black. And I guess I was scared racist because I was really horrified because after watching all the movies about you know what's going on in the hood and I was really scared just because I thought they hate white people and they'll just you know at least I'll get beat up I'm not sure about getting killed but I was really scared for you know a couple first weeks till I figure out what's going on so now during the Soviet Union the only black people that we had there were students from Africa so there was a quite a educational program going on uh, and a lot of uh, students came to Moscow, Kiev, maybe Minsk, to the big cities. They had some international departments uh, in universities. Uh, like in Moscow, there was a university, uh, actually, actually it was named after Patrick Lumumba, I believe. So they had a lot of students from Africa. Kiev had a uh, university that had uh, quite a few, I cannot tell you how many, I sorry I was too lazy to do research, but 
they be partially pi- paid by the governments. And, you know, they were the country that are friendly to the Soviet Union. So I guess Soviet Union was sponsoring. Um, so they all started engineering or whatever. But the first thing they had to learn will be to learn Russian. So they come and the first year will be just basically learning Russian language because they didn't, we didn't have uh, courses in English or French or whatever the language they you know, country was speaking or people were speaking there. So they will learn Russian and then they'll study the subjects, get education, they go back to their homeland. And I'm not sure how the things were going in the colleges themselves, in those universities, you know, because they stayed in the dorms. I think they had a separate, like a more upgraded dorms for foreign students. Uh, but the problems like with the regular population uh, started when those African guys started dating local girls. And that's when the ugly face of uh, Soviet racism showed up. Because people were extremely angry. Like, if you see the girl walking with the black guy on the street, I mean, there'll be literally people stopping, like old ladies will be yelling at the girls, like, what's wrong with you? You can't find a boyfriend, you, you know, local boyfriend like Ukrainian or Russian. Why you have to uh, date this? Uh, cigarette butts it's one of the derogative term of use like my dad was saying all the time because you know the end of the cigarette butt is black so they call them akurak you know cigarette butt so girls will be having a hard time getting hard time and then of course black students they could get in trouble if there'll be some you know bunch of young drunk guys seeing a black guy with the white girl they might just stop them and start harassing maybe even beat up the guy now, I don't know why would local girls want to date African guys. Uh, they definitely had way more money. Because at that time, we were talked many times, those Soviet people, people were generally poor. The salaries were really low. But since, you know, medical education was free, medical uh, service was free, education was free, housing was pretty inexpensive rent if you get house, good housing. So... Otherwise, people don't have a lot of money. So when those guys came, even from Africa, which is, you know, those countries are not rich, but they had foreign hard currency, and they could bring goods that people paid a lot of money. So all you need to bring with you, you know, Levi's jeans, chewing gum, some other foreign goods, and you can make a killing reselling that stuff in Moscow or Kiev because people will pay, you know, 200, 300 rubles for a pair of Levi's. So you can turn your $50 into 300 rubles. And that's a lot of money. So those guys were rich in Soviet standards. And I guess some girls just like guys who have money. You can spend money on them, can give them nice presents that no one can get them here in Soviet Union. Or maybe they just like something exotic. Like, you know, maybe some girls always fantasize, oh, I like to date black guy. I don't know, but so there were some ladies that were dating, even there was they were harassed. Some of them even married the African students and left the country, went to Africa. Uh, and I don't know any stories about how good the situation was there. Uh, but as I said, the, everyone, both boyfriend, black boyfriend and a white girlfriend, they both had really hard time in Moscow, Kiev. They were harassed. And stuff like that. So we had a, quite a few races in that way. And, you know, myself, I'm guilty of that too. Because there was a, some friend of mine told me a story. And we all thought it was so funny. And it was like, uh, they said, there was a, she was riding, the, this girl was riding on a trolley bus late night. So there was like one of the last trolley buses. It's about midnight. And they said it was almost empty. There was a drunk uh, guy sitting in the back of the trolley bus, just kind of half asleep. And there was this black African student that was kind of lost. So when the trolley bus stops and doors open and on, on, a bu- on the stop, it will say bus stop, he will kind of uh, step down. And if somebody on the bus stop, he will ask him, hey, is this is a such and such bu- uh, stop? Because he's looking for a specific stop that he needs to get off to go back to whatever. And they tell him no, and then, of course, doors close. He rides to the next stop, does the same thing. Doors open, he steps down, you know, he kind of sticks out his head out of the trolley bus, asking people, is that the specific stop? So at one stop, he does the same. 
it, you know, he did the same thing. He kind of leaned out of the trolley bus, thought the door opened, and he's asking, what the stop is this? And suddenly this drunk guy gets up, kicks this dude in his uh, behind really hard. So the guy flies out of the trolley bus, you know, f- f- uh, face down on the blacktop. And this drunk guy yells at him, this is your stop. This is Africa. And door closed and trolley bus left. And she said, whoever was in the bu- on the trolley bus, including driver, they just had a really good laugh. And I thought it was so funny. And I'm looking back like, oh, my God, it was so mean. But, yeah, that's what the drunk guy got. He got tired of this hearing this accented Russian, what stop it is it? What stop is it? And he just got up, kicked him in the ass, said, Africa. Doors closed, they left, and they thought it was very funny. And even uglier face of Soviet racism was happening in schools because, you know, when you date a black guy and things maybe don't didn't work out, like marriage-wise, whatever, you can still get pregnant, right? So there were quite a few girls that got uh, pregnant with the African students and then maybe they didn't want to do anything with that. They just left for home. So there were girls like single mom with mulatto kids. You know, we call them, uh, if it's a mix, that's mulatto. We say mulat. So you could tell that they're not white, right? They might have a dark curly hair, kind of not black skin, but darker skin. And those kids had horrible time in schools. Like they were, I mean, I remember reading articles in the newspapers, just they would be just picked on all the time by other kids. You know, I think some kids maybe even committed suicide, but they were just harassed by children. So not even on adult level, even on a children level, it was really bad. And then, you know, like usually mulatto kids, they uh, get... um, how to say correctly. So they get sexually developed earlier than regular white kids. So, you know, girls already in the fourth, fifth grade will start showing, you know, boobs and her butt get bigger. So they'll get sexually harassed on the top of being harassed regularly, sometimes get raped. So, yeah, we actually had a quite a bad situation with racism in Soviet Union, although it was never in public. But they said that those places where we had African students we actually had a quite a few ugly uh, things happening uh, between local people, Soviet people, and uh, black people. Well, I hope you like this story, and I hope you learned something new about life in the Soviet Union. Thank you so much for uh, watching my channel. Please don't forget to put likes under this video, uh, ask questions, put your comments, and we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye.